Good morning, boys and girls. How are you? My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church. And I'm so happy that you are tuned in today for another online program where we get to learn about Jesus, singing some songs, and learning a very, very interesting topic today. There's even a game that we're going to play together today. And I hope that mom and dad, you get to play with the kids as well. Now, Kid is not going to be here today because Kid is keeping that social distance. Are you keeping the social distance? How hard is it? It's hard, isn't it? I know. I like to hug people. I like to give people high fives. I like to walk on the street. I like to, to say hello to everyone. But right now, we have to keep a distance because that's the only way we're going to keep our body healthy and we're going to kill this germ just like that. What have you been doing at home? Have you been playing with mom and dad? Are you helping them? Are you playing board games? Are you playing video games? Are you watching a lot of TV? Yeah, a little bit of everything. Well, it's hard, isn't it? Mom and dad are spending a lot of time at home. They can't go to work sometimes. They can't even go outside. But don't worry, this is gonna go away soon and very soon. We're going to have you guys here at church again. We're going to play at Kids Connection. We're going to sing some songs together again, and you get to see your friends. Speaking of friends, do you miss your church friends? Yes? Well, I miss you guys. Well, we're going to do something very special for you. Mom and dad, listen to this. This coming Sunday now, we're going to open the Zoom line just for kids at 1 o'clock. This Sunday, all the kids from church are going to connect via Zoom. Email vallejo at graceunconditional.com and request a code for the kids this coming Sunday on Zoom. It's only for kids. Mom and dad, you can sit right next to the kids and watch them interact. But we're going to open just for kids, not for adults. Every Sunday, starting this Sunday now, at one o'clock in the afternoon. Kids, let your friends know that we're gonna connect with each other. We're gonna say hello. We're gonna ask how everybody's doing this coming Sunday at one o'clock. Don't forget, and I hope that you guys can make it to that meeting, okay? Wonderful. Now let's get another Kids Connection program started without kid, of course, but I'm gonna invite you guys at home to stand up and sing a song that it is well known. Everybody know the song. I'm going to sing it here, and you're going to sing it home, our song of the day.
Wonderful. Thank you so much for singing that song with us. Now I'm going to invite you to close your eyes so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being our God. Thank you for protecting us. I ask that you keep everyone who's watching this video now safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Now that we sing our song and we are ready to start another program, I'm going to take you right into our missionary story. Are you ready to see where your offerings are going to go? Wait a second. My offerings? I, I can't give you my offerings. You are at home. I am here at church. The missionaries are way out in different areas of the world. Well, mom and dad, you can click on the link just above here, right there, and you get to submit your donation with your credit card for the missionaries. Now let's listen to the story where our offerings for today is going to be. People in the church many times don't understand what I'm talking about. This is the biggest challenge for me. How I can be part of the world as a salt, what Jesus said, you have to be salt, and uh, to be close with God. This is my challenge for me and for my family. To be very close by God and to be close with the people outside. Mostly I am working with not Christian people. Pastor Jan lives in Košice, Slovakia. His passion is working with people who don't know about Jesus' love for them, especially the Roma community. Many people will not associate with the Roma and find ways to keep their distance. Years of cultural differences have created a barrier between the ethnic groups in the region, but Jan feels called to reach out anyway. He often organizes activities with the Pathfinder Club and outings for underprivileged children and youth. If you are working with the children, you can, you can uh, touch uh, parents' hearts. If I am uh, good for children, parents are happy as well. Pastor Jan works in the outskirts of Košice, among the Roma community. With each visit, he brings gifts. These simple presents open the doors and show them that he cares about them. The Roma have challenging lives. In this house, seven families live together. One of the mothers is a Seventh-day Adventist, and she teaches the children stories from the Bible. Pastor Jan stops here to greet his friends and bring a word of encouragement. Before leaving, the group takes a picture together to remember this special moment. Meet Monica. From a young age, she really wanted to participate in activities with the Pathfinders. But she faced a lot of challenges with her family because they believed the Adventists would not be a good influence in her life. Pastor Jan taught Monica important truths from the Bible. He also helped her find strength to succeed despite her family's opposition and the scarce opportunities in her community. Today, Monica is an example to others in her village. She is well-educated, having graduated from university, and serves as an educational coordinator at her town's community center. Monica was a very special person. She was like a miracle, because she wanted, knew about Jesus everything. She wanted to read Bible properly, and then she started to teach another Bible, I love to see the children coming with joy in their eyes. They can see that I've changed because of Jesus. I am so happy when they say they want to be closer to Jesus and have a story like mine. Monica and her husband now lead three groups of youth and children at the local Adventist church. They hope to disciple others in the community and mend broken relationships so God's church can grow. Please pray for Pastor Jan's and Monica's outreach ministries. This quarter, your 13th Sabbath offering will support this work among vulnerable children in Slovakia and the Czech Republic. It will also build a church with a children's center in Bulgaria and assist Adventist education in Spain and Germany. 
thank you for your support of the 13th Sabbath offering. It's wonderful to know what our offerings are doing around the world, isn't it? Well, the missionaries get to share the story of Jesus and the love of Jesus with other people because of our financial support, the money that we send it to them. So hopefully mom and dad got a chance to do that today with you, okay? Great. Now, here is an interesting topic that I'm going to talk to you about. Well, the topic is, it's a... Um, very complicated word it's a difficult word that not many of you know and the word that we're going to be talking about today or right now at least is opposite what what is opposite well this is opposite this is the front of the page this is the back of the page so, opposite is something completely different. I'm going to show you an example of what opposite is. Up. What is the opposite of up? Do you know? It is down. The opposite of up is down. So now, I'm going to play a game with you. I'm going to ask mom and dad to join in and help the kids. We're gonna start easy. We're gonna go with some easy words, okay? But after these easy words, we're gonna go into a couple more words that I think that maybe even mom and dad are gonna have a hard time. Let's see how far you can go with the opposite of these words. Are you ready? The first word is old. What is the opposite of old? New. If you guessed it new, you guessed it right. Old opposite is new. Good job. Let's see the next one. What is the opposite of hot? The opposite of hot is cold. Good job. Good job. If you guessed it cold, you guessed it right. What is the opposite of boy? What is it? Girl. Good job. The opposite of boy is girl. Now let's go to the next word. Are you ready? What is the opposite of night? Who knows? The opposite of night is day. Very good. You're doing good so far? Yes? You got everything right? Good. Here we go. What is the opposite of rich? opposite of rich is poor. The opposite of rich is poor. Yes, you guessed it right. Wonderful. Now, what's the opposite of left? The opposite of left is right. You got it? Wonderful. Now, what's the opposite of bad? Hmm. The opposite of bad is good. Yes, you're doing fine. Great, great. Now, what is the opposite of short? Hmm. Short? Oh, the opposite of short is tall. Good job. Some of you might start having a little trouble there. Maybe not. Okay, let's see. What is the opposite of in? The opposite of in is out. Yes, you got it. What is the opposite of close? Opposite of close is open. Yes, excellent. Now, what is the opposite of man? The opposite of man is woman. You got it? Great. I wonder if it's going to start getting harder very soon. What is the opposite of before? 
the opposite of before is after. Good, good. Now, here we go. What is the opposite of on? Hmm. The opposite of on is off. You got it? Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to start getting a little bit a little bit hard for some of you. But let's see if you can still keep going, okay? What is the opposite of wide? Wide is narrow. Right? Okay. Now here we go. What is the opposite of heavy? Opposite of heavy is light. Good job. Good job. Mom and dad, you're still doing okay? Yeah? Okay. Here we go. Now we're going to get serious. Here we go. What is the opposite of serious? Serious is funny. Haha. -ha, did you know that? Ah, maybe some of you is starting to miss already. Here we go. What is the opposite of sunny? Opposite of sunny is cloudy. Right? Cloudy. Now, what is the opposite of kind? Huh. The opposite of kind is cruel. Aha! How many of you knew that? Here we go. We're going to keep going. What is the opposite of never? The opposite of never is always. Aha! Did you get it? How many did you do miss so far? I still have more. Here we go. Now, moms and dads, what is the opposite? And you can help the kids. What is the opposite of total? Hey, did I get you? What is the opposite of total? Who knows? Come on. The opposite of total is partial. Did you know that? Total, partial. If you got it right, good job. Here comes the next one. What is the opposite of awake? The opposite of awake is asleep. Did you get it? Good job. Here comes the next one. What is the opposite of teach? The opposite of teach is learn. Got it? Okay. We're getting there. What is the opposite of other? Hmm. Did you know that other, there's an opposite word for other? Yes. The opposite of other is same. Okay. Here comes the next one. What is the opposite of ask? Oh, no. Now I got somebody. The opposite of ask is reply. Got it? Good job. How many did you miss so far? Not sure? Yeah? Okay. Here it comes. Another hard one. What is the opposite of modern? <gasps> hmm. Modern. That's a hard word. Well, opposite of modern is ancient right yes something modern opposite is ancient okay here we go what is the opposite of visitor come on that's an easy one no it's actually hard the opposite of visitor is host mom and dad how are you doing kids some of you lost already yes how many did you miss? I wish that I knew. What is the opposite of public? Hmm. Public? How about private? Public? Private.
I did. Got it? Okay, I have three more. Two more. What is the opposite of polite? This one is not that hard. You got it? The opposite of polite is rude. Got it? Good job. What is the opposite of love? The opposite of love is hate. Now that's what I want to talk to you about today. Love and hate. Why are they opposite? Why is the word love the opposite of the word hate? What is love? And what is hate? Hate is when you don't like someone. Hate is when you don't like something. Hate is when you really, 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 really don't like something. Then you hate that something. Do you hate ice cream? No, you love ice cream. I love ice cream. Do you love broccoli? Mm, some of you, some of you love broccoli. Others hate broccoli. Do you like to go to the park? Yes, I love going to the park. Do you hate playing with your friends? No, you love playing with playing with your friends. Love is something that makes you feel good. Love is something that brings joy in your heart. Love is something that makes you happy. And hate is something that gives you that angry feeling inside of your gut and you don't like something, either something that tastes bad or something that doesn't look good or something that smells bad, like a rotten apple that's been sitting in the sun under a bucket for three months. Ew! Do you like that smell? No! I can imagine. That's hate. I hate that smell. It's something that you don't like. But love is something that you like. You like it so much that you love that person. Like you guys. I like you so much, so, so much that I love all of you. Now, I don't like when I'm walking in the dark and I kick the corner of a furniture in the house. Oh, that hurts. It hurts so much that I hate when that happens. Hate versus love. Now, in today's lesson, we're going to be learning about love. And we're going to be learning the difference between love and hate. And we're going to see how God loves us and what is hate. So I want you to pay attention to your teacher classroom that is going to follow this program. And in that program, in, in that lesson or that classroom, we're going to be learning something about love versus hate. We learn different things every Sabbath. Last week, we learned about a kid that was doing good for other kids. He was being kind to other kids. Let's see what today's story is all about. Hopefully, we get to learn more about love and how to show love to other people than hate other people. Can we love or hate people? Does God loves you or does God hate you? I think God loves me because he created me and he protects me and he died on the cross for me and he's preparing a place in heaven. So pay attention as we learn in today's lesson about love versus hate. 
now you know why we sing the song. Are you ready to sing the song again? All right. So let's go ahead and stand up and sing our song of the day one more time before we listen to our Sabbath school lesson from our teacher. I had a great time singing a song. Hopefully next week we have Kid here with us so we can sing that song together. Or not that song, but maybe some other songs. Now keep in mind that this song that we just played right now is going to be on the bottom of this page. All the way down there. Okay? So you get to come back and listen to the song and sing along all week as we learn more about love versus hate in our lesson today. Now, in addition to the song that we have on the bottom, we also have an additional material. It's a cartoon, five minutes cartoon that is going to talk about the coronavirus. So maybe if not today, if maybe not now, later, you can come back and watch that cartoon. So we learn what this coronavirus is doing, how we can protect ourselves. Okay, right now, I'm going to invite you to close your eyes and we're going to close our program with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love. Thank you because you died on the cross for us. What a great love. Thank you for the teachers that are going to teach the lesson today. I, help, I ask that you help every child to learn more about you each and every day. Bless everyone who's listening to this program now. Keep them safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. I had a great time here at Kids Connection with you guys. And I hope that you come back next week. Remember that every week we're going to upload new programs for Kids Connection. So keep coming back. The program today is going to stay on our website all week. And next Sabbath, we're going to upload a new program for the next lesson that you're going to listen. Okay? Now, don't forget, Sunday at 1 o'clock, what do we have? We have Zoom for kids. You're going to meet your friends. You're going to talk to them. You're going to have some fun at 1 o'clock this coming Sunday. Mom and Dad, email the church. Right now, we're going to dismiss everyone. Blue rug, green rug, yellow rug, and red rug. 
you may go to your classrooms. God bless you. Have a great Sabbath. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hi, kids. How are you? I'm glad you're joining us this morning. Hi. Hi to everyone. We're not in the classroom, but I'm still glad to be able to communicate with you. What happened during the week? Let me know. Can you perhaps send me a message? Can you probably leave a comment? Please let us know what you're doing. We want to know how are you staying safe during this time? If you had a birthday during the week, happy birthday. We're glad that you were able to have a birthday. If you have something special to celebrate, please let us know so that we can join celebration with you. During this week, we're going to be talking about grace and a little bit more about love. Remember that last week we were talking about grace? What is grace? Grace was something that was given to us and we were passing on to someone else. That is what grace was. But love, what is to love someone? Normally, we love the people that we care for. Like, for example, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our grandparents. That comes kind of natural because we are related to them. But what happens when we need to love others that are not part of our family? It becomes a little bit difficult loving when others are not treating us nice. In the Bible, we can find a commandment. And normally we think about the commandments that are given in Exodus 20. And those were the commandments. But when Jesus was on earth, he said, let me give you a little bit extra so you can understand the commandments. A new commandment I give you, love one another. How is it possible to give love? How do you feel when you love someone? I love my children just because they're my children. I don't need them to do anything for me. I just love them. You know, when we love someone, we just give freely that love. Can you hug the person who's next to you if you're able to? How does that feel? Do you feel loved? Yes, we love feeling loved. But sometimes we pick and choose who we want to love. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me say that again. We pick and choose who we want to love. But wait a minute. Does, let's read back in the Bible because I'm not very clear. The commandment was to love one another. So that means that anyone can receive love. Hmm. This was a very tricky question that they were asking Jesus. What is the most important commandment? They wanted to tease Jesus to see which commandment he was going to pick. But Jesus said, you know, you must love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. When you love someone, you will follow them all the way through because of love. God wants us to love him with all our hearts so that following the commandments doesn't feel like a burden, but it feels an act of kindness, an act of love, that we're following the commandments, not because we have to, but we want to show our love of God through following the commandments. You know, love, it's a very, very powerful feeling that can break a lot of different barriers. When God sent his only son to earth, was a very difficult decision for him. 
imagine he had to give up the one thing that he loved the most. And he's, he, I, I can't imagine him feeling Jesus is going to earth because by his sacrifice, all humanity can be saved. That is the extreme of love. That was the ultimate sacrifice that God did for us because he died for us whether we love him or whether someone did not love him. He still died for everyone. He wants everyone to be saved. And he wanted to make sure that he showed his love to, some, to everyone. God makes it very clear that anyone who does not know God cannot love because God is love. If we are not able to love someone, we have not learned how to get to know God. God not only said, I love you, but he's always proving it to us time after time how love is transmitted to us. He sends us many gifts every day because he wants to make sure that you know that he loves you. You are not forgotten. You are cared for and you are loved by God. Every day you are on the top of his list. Make sure that they know that I love them. We are going through difficult times and you may feel afraid at times, but the one thing we always need to make sure that we do not forget is that God loves you. By being nice to others, we are showing the love of God to others. The last six commandments, probably you can review them at home, but the last six commandments, they're specifically about how we treat others by love. We can't treat someone nice if we do not love. And sometimes others do things to us, but sometimes we also do things to others. For example, think about last time when you took away a toy from your brother or your sister. Think about the last time you got really upset and said some mean words to someone. And it's normal, we're humans and we act like that. Sometimes we get upset. But when we trust the God, He can change your heart. We can pray, God, I don't understand why I'm feeling angry. I just feel angry. Please help me. Take a deep breath. And God will do the rest. We are not perfect and we make mistakes very often. But when we have God in our hearts, He can help us on seeing things differently. He's the one that can show us the way. Last week we read our memory verse, so please go ahead and take out your Bible so we can read together. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Remember Ephesians, it's right after Galatians. Go ahead and read it. Now let's read it together. Ready? God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us new people so that we would do good works. God has planned in advance of those good works for us. He had planned for us to live our lives doing them. Ephesians 2.10 you are very important to God. You were, you were planned 
and cared for. God had been waiting for you to exist for a long time. And just as he was waiting for you, he also had a purpose for you to fulfill. God's love, it's beyond understanding. We cannot much imagine how much God loves us. Every day, God is with you. Every day, remember that God cares for you. And as you go through the week, remember, I was created for a purpose because God loved me first. Probably you can share that to others. Whenever you encounter someone that is going through a difficult time, you can probably tell them, I know you're having a difficult time, but if you pray to God, God will show you his love. There are different ways on how we can care for others. Think about ways how we can care for others. Yes, those are very good things that we can do. Yes, thank you for sharing. There are many ways we can care for others. Okay, kids, now it's time for our crafts. What are we going to do today? So, probably you know this about me, probably don't, but I love markers. Yay! So I have different kind of markers. Probably at home you can grab your own markers. Probably you have crayons, have, probably you can uh, pencil crayons, um, any type of crayons or pens that you would like to, bring them over because we're going to need them. We're also going to need a white piece of paper so that we can write on. So ready? Come with me. We're going to take our white piece of paper and with something to write, we're going to write love short. Ready? So you can do love and you probably can do letters. You can probably do some other designs. And we're going to do love short. After that, we're going to draw a circle. So you can draw it freehand. If you find something that you could that could help you, you could also do that. Let's go ahead and draw a circle. So it's going to look something like this. Ta -da! Ready? So now we're going to divide the circle first into four places. So we're going to do a line diagonal like this. And then we're going to do a line across. So now we're going to have four spaces. Now we're going to do a line from here all the way to here. And then from here all the way across. Ready? It might help if you draw first where your lines are going to cross like I did. So I know that this line is going to cross all the way here and this line is going to cross all the way here. It might help you so your brain knows where they're going, but you can try it different ways. So let's go ahead and draw them. It doesn't have to be perfect. Probably yours are better than mine. But this is how it should look like. So now I want you to come up with ideas on how you can show love to others. So I'm thinking my first thing, 
how I can love others could be ask how I can help. That would be my number one. Ask someone how I can help. Sometimes, you know, parents are very busy doing a lot of things. And what if we come, come and say, oh, is there something I can help with? That would be a very nice act of kindness. What could be another act of kindness? Perhaps a second act of kindness could be help setting the table. Probably when it's lunchtime or breakfast time or dinner time, we can say, oh, I can help setting up the table or I can clean afterwards. So why don't you come up with more things how you can help now that you're at home? I'm sure you're able to find more than I have. So go ahead and finish the chart. And probably if you want to share with us, you could probably take a picture of it and send it to us. During the week, in the morning, pick one. You can even label them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You could probably label them as morning, afternoon, or love towards mom, love towards dad, love towards a neighbor, love towards a friend. You could probably label them. There are different ideas on how you can do them. It's up to you how you want to do them. But during the week, go ahead and work on that. Our field notes are going to be posted on the website. This week, we're not going to review them, but you can go ahead and print them, and you can do them with your family during the week. This week, we want you to study all week about love. So once you have finished that on next Friday, do a prayer with your family. Do a special prayer on how you want to dedicate your family towards God. How we want God to be in the center of our family so that we can be a family that shows love to others. It was great having you today, and I'm very glad you were able to join me. I hope to see you next week. Remember, next week's lesson, it's a new quarter. So we're going to be talking about new things. So please go ahead and tune in next Saturday so you don't miss out the great blessings God has for you. I hope you had a great time. So now let's go ahead and bow our heads so we can pray. Our dear God, we are grateful because we were able to spend some time with you. We're happy to know that each one of us is doing well. Please bless our families and thank you for taking care of us. Show us during the week to love others, to love our neighbors, to love people that are not like us and do not think like us. Please show us how we can love others and pass on that love that you have given us. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video for today. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.